Hi everyone, it's Christine and I'm here for another edition of Library Friday where I will share books, mostly second-hand books from my collection or new ones that have just joined my collection that are of interest to sewers or slow stitchers or those interested in textile arts and crafts. And so today we have a book called Elizabethan Needlework Accessories and it says in subtitle, the second title in the Elizabethan Needlework series. And it's by Sheila Marshall. Um, let's turn it over because it's um, evening here and I've got my little lights on. I've had to prop the book up um, so I get less glare on it because the pages are very shiny. Um, and on the back, it has the ISBN number, which is 04730497475. That's something that my stitchy friend Christina creates, um, who also has a YouTube channel, does um, whenever she's sharing books. And it's just a great way that you can track it down if you want to. Um, and it's published by Georgeson Publishing Limited. So the description is rich, colourful and textured, easy to follow stitch diagrams with seven beautiful projects for you to stitch. Continue your Elizabethan journey of discovery. Well, this will be the start of my Elizabethan journal of discovery, being the first of um, Sheila's books that I've looked at. So on the front, we've got this beautiful um, drawstring pouchy bag um, and then various little needle work accessories by the looks of it. So let's jump on inside. It's quite a long um, book, so I can only sort of fit one side on at a time. So just excuse me while I shuffle, etc. Um, so this book came secondhand to me um, recently from Brotherhood Books. I always write the price I pay, so that was $7.00 which I think is quite a bargain because this book look like, looks like it's never probably actually been um, used. It's a lovely little design. Um, printed in New Zealand and 1998. So 1998 sounds quite recent to me, but when I kind of do the years, it's a bit, bit scary. <laughs> um, okay, so contents. We've got an introduction, we've got how to use this book, and then we've got some information around necessities, so backing, frames, transferring designs. We've then got sections on stitches, fishbone, padded satin, long and short, pico and extended pico stitch, couching, single brussels stitch, needle, lace, roses, and raised work. And then it goes into what I presume are the projects, so needle book, pin cushion, scissor case, book cover, Colour plates, oh no, colour plates would then be um, probably the pictures. Button box, petal hoosif and kingfisher thimble holder. So that all sounds very interesting. Um, and so introduction, the author sharing that this um, these book and these embroideries are inspired by the work that she saw in London museums during her three years training at art school. And then how she used this book. So it talks about each of the sections in the book and flags that the, yeah, there's, um, the embroidery projects are shown in full colour in the central pages of the book. So that's good because the book's mostly um, black and white from what I've seen so far. And so under necessities, it talks about each of the elements, fabrics, threads, needles, beads, scissors, backing, embroidery frames. Transferring the design, tracing the design, the light box, sewing carbon paper, double tracing method, template system. So lots of information there. And then enlarging and decreasing the size of the design and finishing off. Okay, and then we go into the stitches. So we have um, diagrams, which look quite informative, as well as um, notes to go with those diagrams. But there's lots of nice space. It's quite well set out, this. It's um, not sort of all crammed. It's nice to look at. Then we've got satin stitch. And then we've got long and short stitch with a bird as an example. And pico and extended pico stitch. Then we're on to couching. Two pages for that. Single Brussels stitch. 
I think I've done a single Brussels stitch before. And then needle lace roses. Not sure, I don't think I've done those either. So definitely gonna to have to look at those ones. Oh, and still goes over with needle lace filling using single Brussels stitch. Ah, so the two techniques come together. And then we've got raised work embroidery. And again, single Brussels stitch used in raised work embroidery. And then we're into our project. So a needle book with these beautiful designs on it and beautiful tassels. And a lovely design there. A nice simple line drawing that can be traced and then transferred or other methods can be used as well. And then it talks about the preparation, the embroidering, some notes. And then for each of the elements, so each of the flowers, it then lists um, the different threads in the DMC anchor, the Auvergne Soir um, from the two ranges from that, that company. So that's great. It gives you a really good guide. Um, although I do think DMC and others do change their numbers. So you'd probably have to sort of, yeah, check what number was actually intended if you want to stick really um, closely to the design I'd probably just find a color that I was happy with and and do that so we've got borage we've got pansy carnation and rose other flowers shown there and then to make it all up to hinge it inside pages tassels there we go and then second project which is, is this great um, sort of geometrically designed pin cushion and so it's using um, hexagons. So I'm wondering if I can use some of my smaller hexagons and assemble them to, to make a shape like this, although they might be too small, particularly if this is the meant to be the size that they are. My hexagons are probably only about, about that size. Um, again, it's got preparation, transferring the designs and a template to use, and then embroidering the flowers. Good suggest and good handy hint that there needs to be a flat flat side under where you embroider the flowers. And then again, um, the selections of the different types of thread for each of the flowers. And thistle and strawberry, bronze borage and carnation. Normally borage is, is blue, so that sounds interesting, bronze borage. Then we've got needle lace rose. And then making it all up so it shows how it's assembled and the base. And then we're on to the next project, which is a scissor or spectacle case. And again, we've got really good illustrative designs that can be copied and transferred. Goes through the same steps again. And again, the selection of um, colours. Oh, and it's got the leaf key to tell which types of the colours to use. And then we've got each of the flowers again that are illustrated. So it describes really clearly by the looks of it how to do each of them. And again, which threads. So lots of pictures and lots of explanatory text, but nicely, nicely set out. And then the pomegranate or fantasy flower. And then we're on to the next project, which is a book cover. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful. And now we get to look at some of the coloured pictures of the finished work. So isn't that amazing? That's the needle book. Lots of gold work on it by the looks of it. So yeah, using gold. But that looks like a gold DMC. I'm not sure if it's a particular gold gold thread. I'll have to read about the threads to use. And then we've got the pin cushion with the geometric design. So made using the, the hexes. So that will be interesting even just to see how it's put together. And I can see myself using it for, for other applications. But I do love the, love the strawberry embroidery that's a bit easy to see and just vibrant they're the grapes I think 
and then we've got the book cover wouldn't that be lovely to create on a journal journal cover you wouldn't want to give it away though would you just beautiful and then the scissors case the rose side and then there's the scissors case the strawberry side you almost think you only need one beautiful side because you wouldn't know which one to which one to look at which side to keep it up oh and then the button box that's funny because if you can see behind here i've got a um a box that holds all my buttons from my nana my very very special ones because they came from nana I just love running my hands through them but yeah what a beautiful idea to make an inlay or an overlay for a a box to keep your buttons in with beautiful embroidery on it and then this this looks amazing and this plays right into my love of birds this is the kingfisher thimble holder how lovely and it looks like it does it have this little bit that the thimble goes into I guess it looks that looks quite narrow but maybe it's sort of like it's one of those springy outy things and then I'm wondering if the thimble actually ends up poking poking up into that area on the bird we'll have, to have a look and then we've got the petal husif which I guess is a bag of some sort or pouch and so this is the design to be traced for whatever the last project was before we got to the color plates let's just have a look what were we working on the book cover that's right that would be the book cover And again, it goes through the different um, steps. Again, describing the different colors and the different chords to use. And then we've got the, the button box. And again, you've got the design, which you could use for other purposes as well. Love that it's got the little bird in the middle of that design. Again, all the different steps and the different flowers and threads continues over. So some recurring themes like the borage, it's got a butterfly. Again, a leaf key. And then the petal husif. Yeah, so essentially a bag, it sounds like. Pouch. Um, sorry, I don't think I showed you the design side of it. So that's the that's the designs to be traced for the bag. So it's like a the sort of oh no, it doesn't sort of the bits don't join together like that hexagon one. The the petals sit up around sort of like the core of the bag. So that's like the bud inside. So I hope you're all having a good day. I don't think I said that at the start. Hope you're enjoying this flip through. Again, it's got the same sort of sections for this one. Some more diagrams and templates. And the colouring and the threads to use. The convolulus. Hmm, interesting. The daffodil, so that must be a type of flower, I've not heard of that. Tulip, iris, have definitely heard of all of those ones. And then the pocket. Okay, and then primrose, narcissus. Columbine, love in the mist, which I love. Has, now it just pops up every year in my garden but has the most delicate foliage and the most beautiful blue and also I've got the white and I think there's yeah pink pinky purpley variety as well that comes up um, but it's also called nigella because it has the nigella seeds which are actually edible and then we've got pansy um, but always check in the garden don't eat anything unless you're absolutely sure what it is and, and what's edible don't want anyone poisoning themselves um, on the, as a result of a, a stitchery video. Um, pedal backs, construction. Uh, yeah, 
Okay, so quite a bit involved in the construction. Got the template for the Pentagon template. And then steps you through the final construction as well. Lots there. It's got the butterfly. And then it's got the bee. I do love bees, so I think I'll use that design for something at some point. And then we get to our Kingfisher thimble holder. So to store your favourite thimble and to serve as a decoration on your chair side table as you stitch. So it looks like you need to use um, modelling clay for the body. And then stiff wire. So it's quite a, um, a multi-material project. I thought it might have all been made out of fabric. And then, yeah, all different threads and then construction of the body. And so that's the actual size that it ends up. So it's decently sized. Not as big as Hondrick, Hon Hendrick, the, um, the hair that Corinne and Susanna have been making, though. That was a, he was a monster, or Henrietta, I think, for... Was it Henrietta for Susanna's one? They were big, big hairs. Um, yeah, all of the instructions for how to make your kingfisher. And then the embroidery. And it says you're using foundation net. And then the feathers, tail, body. It does look like quite the project. Then tail feathers and the pocket lining. And then all the different things you need to do to get your thing, kingfisher to come together. It's probably why they left it to the last project. I think it looks the most complicated, possibly. And then there's a... Okay, so there's a pocket that forms part of the design. So yeah, that's the top lining of the pocket. So that looks like all of that actually becomes a pocket. So I guess there's other things you can keep in the pocket as well as the, the thimble being on the cord. There you go. And so, other publications, there's Exploring Embroidery, Exploring Elizabethan Embroidery. It says coming soon, but I imagine it's um, already arrived, given this book was published in 1998. Festive Elizabethan Creations. And then it's got the distributors, whether they're still the active distributors or not, I'm not sure. But for those in the US, it says United States Distributor Access Commodities, Inc., the Australian distributor Stadia Trading PTY Limited. Um, and then we've got, yeah, Jordson Publishing Limited in New Zealand. And so that's, that's our Elizabethan needlework accessories. So I won't keep you um, any longer. I'm going to be getting on with doing some more work on my tree of life, which is coming along. I've been focusing on the, the trunk and having a lovely time stitching. Um, so I will do some nice, quiet, relaxing work on that tonight. So take care, everyone. Hope you have a great rest of your Friday. And I hope you head into a beautiful weekend filled with the things that delight you hopefully some crafting if that's something that you're into and hopefully you might have got some inspiration um, from this book and this flip through. I think I'll definitely be trying some projects out of it or at least some um, stitching out of it so I'll be share, sure to share those with you. Take care everyone. Bye!